Good morning. Today is Thursday, January 25th, and I'm continuing my attempt to make some videos about my experience with glioblastoma and hospice. It looks like I might be running out of time pretty soon. That's the difficulty with trying to do something like this when you're already in the dying process. So if I had some original ambition to make some big series of videos about glioblastoma, well, that's probably not going to happen. Noticed I finally got a haircut. Long overdue for a haircut yesterday. Got my parents to come by. My wonderful parents, Michael and Mary Jean, who have been helping out a lot and will be helping out more. So I got them to come over and help me with some house cleaning yesterday. They took me out to lunch and they took me out to get a haircut. Now everything I do at this time in my life, it's often the final time where I'm like, okay, that's going to be my, I'm probably not going to get another haircut, right? So for now, maybe this will be my final video. Any video I make could be my last one. This morning, I'm happy to announce I'm going to be interviewed for a podcast by a, a woman named Deborah Jarvis. And... I'm going to go out tonight probably and see some friends who are available on one of them. He gets Wednesdays and Thursdays off. So I did go out with him last Thursday, but I've been invited again to go do something. I don't know what, but I'm not going to turn down opportunities when, as long as I'm feeling okay, and I am, and uh, anytime I see somebody, it could be the last time, and I do still have a list of people to call. I made a public announcement on Facebook that I'm basically dying, or I'm on hospice anyway. And I've had a hard time even really thinking about dying. It's a, it's a, well, it's a weird word because of the, in the present progressive tense, I don't feel like I'm dying. I know I am, but I'm not dying today. I'm not dying right now. I'm losing use of my left side, so that I'm losing functioning um, that I can tell will lead to, um, to dying before that long, consider, considering what I can tell is happening to my brain. And it's just sort of dawning on me that I'm not, that I've been kind of focusing more on how long I hope to live than, than, than how realistic it is. Now, nobody's ever given me an exact time frame, just because my doctors don't really work that way. They're, they never said, oh, you're going to live exactly that long, just because glioblastoma is unpredictable. But that's kind of left me open to think, okay, that means I might have, or probably I have another three to six months, even though, even though nobody told me that. I've also been told plenty of times that even though they can't tell me exactly how long I have left, that glioblastoma can definitely grow and spread and change very quickly, and things can get worse very quickly. And in terms of my left side functioning, they are getting worse really quickly. Other than that, my, I'm getting some more headaches. The headaches are a little worse and a little more frequent, but, but that's about it. Um, so I'm still in this mind frame where as long as it's just my left side, uh, the rest of my brain could still be fine for a while. But I'm getting to the point where I have to admit that I'm not going to be. I can't just be independent. I have to focus more on safety, and I'll do what I can, but um, I'm doing less and less on my own. I recently went out to Target on my own. I walked over, no, I took the bus over there and back just to go to CVS and get some final medications that, that had been refilled. And that was quite a challenge and I'm not gonna do that again, not, not on my own, even riding the bus, just getting around. Because I was using a, a hiking pole for a while thinking, okay, I'm just carrying it around in case I need it. But now I'm using it and I really need it. It really wouldn't be. I wouldn't feel very safe or comfortable leaving the house at all without it, especially for any steps. Okay, I'm going to read from this document that I titled, Getting Ready to Die. Getting ready to die is not a bad thing. Actually, it's a bit of a luxury because most people aren't able to get ready. If you die in an accident or in any unexpected way and you don't get to get ready and on the other hand if you get a long progressive disease like alzheimer's and you get stuck with a very long waiting period 
and no decision really how it goes at the end. Even worse, your mind is dead long before your body and people have to take care of that zombie body. I do know some people with Parkinson's and they're definitely still fully alive and aware, but suffering badly for a long time, maybe much longer than they would prefer. So to my mind, those kind of situations mean that you don't get to get ready to die or you don't get to get to die on anything like your own terms. When we talk about cancer, at least in terms of mainstream expectations and language, there's a lot of talk about fighting cancer, like it's some kind of battle. It's not language we tend to use with other diseases. So there's this societal pressure to fight tooth and nail to the very end, to treat as aggressively as possible, to put yourself through a lot of crap just to live a little bit longer. In my situation, for example, my treatment option now, I could put myself through some unpleasant chemo and have a very small chance of any benefit at all. And if there was some benefit, it would be probably small and temporary. But for a little bit, I was thinking of doing it anyway until I realized it was just because I felt some societal pressure. Not from anybody in particular, but just the general idea that I'm supposed to do any treatment I can, even if it's a crummy treatment. So I do not feel like going on hospice is in any way giving up or not being aggressive enough. Even I myself was guilty of being a bit gung-ho for a while. While I was wearing the electromagnets on my head, for example, I was pretty judgmental of anyone who would decide not to do the treatment. I told myself that it was nothing but a big inconvenience. But the truth is that it was more than that. And it does reduce your quality of life for sure to be wearing something like that and carrying around a battery pack. At the time, I emphasized the fact that I could travel with it and I did travel with it. But thinking back, I think that it made my travel experience a lot less enjoyable and more stressful. So now I equally respect the decision to either do that type of treatment or not do it. And that just speaks to how bad glioblastoma is and how bad the treatment options are that I felt it worth it to me just to get maybe three months more time. Another factor in my decision was that while I was using the Optune, the only other treatment I was getting was chemo that, based on my biopsy results, was not expected to work unless I got really lucky. So maybe five to 10% chance of any effect at all. And with the Optune, at least my biopsy results didn't put me at a disadvantage. So I just wanted to feel like I was doing something. But one thing I've realized is that you can do something even if you're not getting any continuing conventional treatment. And I don't mean that I or anybody should do random unconventional treatments, do what you want to do. But what I'm referring to is that I still think, as I thought since my diagnosis, that, that lifestyle matters. So it's worth it and has been worth it for me to stay as active as I can and eat foods containing healthy compounds with anti-cancer properties like anti-inflammatory and antioxidants. And I think it's important to maintain healthy community connections and a healthy mind frame. I'll never know how much of a difference that made in helping me to survive as long as I have. I can maybe credit the dexamethasone I'm taking, steroid, because that's good for the swelling. And I will credit the quality of life that the wonderful hospice people are helping me with but I just mean that even if I'm not getting chemo or a clinical trial of immunotherapy, which I'm not getting by the way, because I'm not eligible for any current trials, even if I'm not getting any of that, I'm still trying to be proactive about my health and my life in any way that I can. I guess that if I spent more time fantasizing about the amazing rest of my life I could have had, I would feel more sad about my situation. But since in reality, my whole life has had a lot of ups and downs, I don't have a reason to really assume that the rest of my life would have turned out that much better. I do think that I would have had more wisdom and I think I would have learned more from my mistakes. Maybe it would have been a better 40 years. Maybe it would have been another five years, 10 years. We really don't know. Really don't know what would have happened. I'm just saying that if I assumed that I would have had a long, amazing life, maybe I'd feel more sad, but I'm no reason to assume anything like that. Who knows what life would have been like.